from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English, winner of the Southern Oregon Television Award of the Year and the Best Education Show for 2017. I'm producer and host John Letts. Ramping Up Your English is an instructional support program for intermediate level English learners. If you've already begun and passed those beginning stages of learning English and you want to reach higher levels of English proficiency, this is a program designed to meet your needs and get you closer to your goal. Ramping Up Your English is for English learners from all language background and for people of all ages. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher levels of English proficiency. Our current thematic unit is Native Americans. This is segment one of episode 80. In our last episode, we introduced this new unit on Native Americans. This is a social studies unit. You know, during my years of teaching elementary school, I never questioned the importance of social studies as content that students needed to learn. Events in the past two years in the United States point out how vital it is for everyone to know how our government works and its role in our society. Knowing our shared history is especially critical to avoiding the mistakes and misdeeds that have been committed during the years. Let's dig deeper into why we need to know these things. When I think about it, it seems to me that the most basic question comes from a drug abuser who was also a victim of a police beating. When the Los Angeles riots occurred in 1991, Rodney King appealed for peace with his poignant question, can't we all just get along? I find that this simple question gets to the very heart of civilization. Having and maintaining a society worth living in depends on a wide diversity of people deciding if they can get along with each other, especially those who may see things differently in the way they see the world, their worldview being very different. This social studies theme, can we just get along, is one of the central ideas in our study of, Na of America's first people. And you'll hear me bring this question up repeatedly throughout the unit. I'm not promising any answers, but we may gain some insight by pondering this question. There are other questions that are addressed in social studies, and we'll look at some of those, but that will come later in the unit. In our last episode, we also learned about the language we'll need to understand and express our understanding in a way that's more advanced than the beginning levels of English. We introduced the parts of speech with an emphasis on verbs. Verbs express action and being in the past, present, and the future. And we'll work with verbs more in detail today. First, though, Let's start with our study of Native, America, Native Americans excuse me, at the beginning of their arrival in North America. Today's Native Americans are the descendants of some of those early arrivals. Let's learn more from this video.
The first humans to step foot in North America survived unimaginable cold to begin a migration and population of two vast continents. To the best of our knowledge, that meant crossing a wide bridge of land that no longer exists. Early immigrants, it's believed, kept pushing east and south as they pursued their food source, mammoths and mastodons and giant sloths, all of which would fail to adapt to cataclysmic changes on this new continent. These early people encountered a world where huge areas were covered with ice sheets a mile thick. Over time, they moved great distances from today's Canadian Arctic to the southern tip of South America. All along the way, they left signs of their existence here. DNA, linguistic, and dental evidence supports the theory of Beringia, the land bridge during a time of low ocean levels, as being the most likely source of the earliest migration to America. Further physical evidence places these early inhabitants with the megafauna that once roamed the continent. Early American family groups hunted woolly mammoths and mastodons, working together to bring down these gigantic elephant-like mammals. Some researchers suppose that these species were hunted to extinction, but there's no evidence of that. It's equally likely that their disappearance resulted from climate change, a change that the people here survived by adapting to those changed conditions. Not all first Americans hunted woolly mammoths. In the deserts of eastern Oregon, the oldest human DNA yet found in America was found in Paisley Caves. People occupied these caves when American horses and camels were present here. A stone line hearth and tools were found in the cave that once was on the edge of a lake. And these western stemmed points are totally different from Clovis points. That lake has dried out with the change in climate from that time, and the arid country has made possible the preservation of the objects left by these early Americans. Researchers found a large number of skeletons from waterfowl, fish, and large mammals like camels. Fossilized human scat indicate this sample dates back to over 14,000 years ago, the oldest human DNA present in America. Prior to the discovery at Paisley Caves in Oregon, it was thought that the Clovis people were the first North American settlers. Clovis hunting tools placed them in America 13,000 years ago. Archaeological materials from near the same time frame were found on the Channel Islands off the coast of what today we call California. About the same time, humans arrived in the Great Basin where they found a cool and wet climate, unlike today. Evidence of human presence 12,000 years ago has also been found on the Oregon coast. People were obviously moving through the area as ice sheets were melting, melting enough to provide passage for people to move. 11,000 years ago, in what's now New Mexico, hunters used spear points that were made in a different way than the widespread Clovis points. This is called the Folsom culture by anthropologists. Researchers can learn a lot about people of the past by studying spear points. At this marsh side kill site, 23 bison were killed using distinctive tools. This was the first time artifacts undisputedly made by humans were found directly associated with faunal remains from an extinct form of bison. The Favel Museum in Klamath Falls, Oregon has a collection of hunting tool points. This online video educates visitors on projectile points and what they tell us about American Indians. 
The Fayetteville Museum's educational online video series wouldn't be complete without acknowledging our incredible Arrowhead collection. Let us begin with a Clovis point. First found in Clovis, New Mexico, this point was discovered with ancient mammoth bones. The Clovis point attributes, it seems, were specific to the Americas and this design spread quickly. Chipped points are found composed of various rock and minerals, including obsidian, shirt, and jasper. This fine example of a Clovis point was found in Silver Lake, Oregon, and is now a part of the permanent collection at the Fable Museum. One of the museum's founders Jean Fable's most prized pieces in the collection is the Fire Opal Arrowhead. It's believed that this projectile point was used for ceremonial purposes. The counties of Southern Oregon and Northern California were home to many Native American tribes. Artifacts like these can tell us a lot about ancient Americans, as well as the people who live here now millennia later. 